As markets change, as economies change, the desires and demands of your clientele are changing as well. So a MOFR, standing for Make Offer for Immediate Response, means what offers could I be making my target audience? So when you go to think about making offer for immediate response, you're making an offer. Offer the most valuable thing you can at the lowest entry price, and you will win. I, I promise you. And free is almost always the best MOFR. Because the first place I would start when you're trying to design a MOFR is to pay attention to the changing needs of your market to make sure that the MOFR that you're offering is is. Welcome back. It's the Millionaire Hairstylist, where our focus is on financial success for creative professionals. I'm here with Cash Lawless, our founder. And Cash, today we are talking about a concept that when you proposed it to me, I said to you, what is that? Which is always a good thing because if Cash comes to me and says something that I don't know what it is, it usually involves something that is smart that I should know about. So <laughs> I'm going to do some learning and you're going to do some teaching and everyone's going to benefit as a result. We're talking today about MOFRS, M-O-F-I-R-S. What does that stand for and what is it? So a MOFR is a concept that I believe Gary Keller, uh, Keller over at Keller Williams, he's this founder of that company. And they are a, I believe, the world's largest real estate brokerage. And uh, I believe they coined this concept called a MOFR, which means it's an acronym for Make Offer for Immediate Response. And this is a lead generation strategy that is used particularly in the real estate world, but is incredibly helpful in a lot of other small businesses. And a lot of people are finding a lot of value from it. And the concept is that as markets change and as, as economies change, the desires and demands of your clientele are changing as well. So what your clients were willing to do six months ago or a year ago, when the economy changes, they may not be willing to do. And so you'll have to change the way that you are generating leads and the way that you're communicating with those customers to get immediate response from them. So a MOFR standing for make offer for immediate response means what offers could I be making my target audience when I'm reaching my avatar and communicating them? What, what, what could I say to them? that would command an immediate response. Because one, when the economy starts to shift, what goes more scarce, right? People are doing less consuming. They may mm -hmm. be not frequenting mm -hmm. that restaurant as often. They may not be visiting the dentist as often. They may not be coming in to visit you as a hairstylist in your chair as often. And so what offers could you be making that would one, capture some of that transitory or transient traffic that's moving from one business to another. Maybe they're looking, they're, there's called price migration. When, when an economy shifts in a downward direction, people are looking for cheaper, higher value options or just higher value options so they're getting more for the money they are spending. And that really drives the mind using the word MOFR. So what could I do to make an offer for an immediate response from my customers? And the first thing you have to do to understand that is understanding what your audience wants now. So let me let's see if I understand this. So it's a the concept here is that you're building marketing around, we, we would use a term like call to action, right? So we, we every marketing effort needs a call to action. What are you asking the customer to do? What are you asking the prospect to do? But the MOFR concept is more specific to what is the offer that you're making that you're trying to get people to say yes to immediately? So in the long run, what we're looking for in any business is I want clients who are going to come to me on a regular basis over the course of a customer value lifetime. And that's what I ultimately want. But that's kind of like saying, I want to get married so I'm going to go around asking a bunch of people if they want to marry me. And it's, well, that's obviously not where the relationship starts. So more immediately, the question is, what are you offering people that they can say yes to immediately? And then what you're saying, Cash, I think is really important is you're not going to have the same offer, the same proposal for the entire duration of your business. It's, it's going to change over time and it should change based on all the factors you just mentioned. What's happening in the economy? What's happening to my mm -hmm. customers? What are they looking for? How are their needs changing? So yeah. what's an example of a MOFR that you might use in this current sort of, let's call it uncertain economic time that you, that is an example of being reflective of what your customer is looking at. What examples come to mind for you of, of ways that you would adapt to that customer need in the offers that you're making for immediate response? Yeah, great question. What I would actually start with is not trying to guess or use examples of what work, have worked for other people. The first place I would start when you're trying to design a MOFR is to do your research. And the best way to do this is to is to one, you should have an existing relationship with your current clientele. 
And if you have that existing relationship where you're currently, currently and consistently adding value to them, you should be able to communicate them and ask them questions about the service they're receiving and the service they wish they were receiving and what they would change about your company. And this is why I think polling, customer polling and surveying is so important because as the market changes, your customers' desires are going to change. And so many businesses are on the back end of these shifts, right? So it's like people say shift happens. Shift happens. It's so true because markets change over time. There's there's a reason that there's there are market cycles and so many small businesses are way behind because they're not in constant communication, studying the changing, adapting desires and demands of their current clientele. So they fall behind. And then by the time they decide, they discover what the market really wants, everyone else has already discovered that right. <laughs> who's it's capturing that market share. And it may not, may not be too late, but it is certainly going to be more difficult for you to capture that market share rather than being ahead. So rather than being a reactive business owner, you can take, you can take action now by starting to in, integrate into your business, serve customer surveys. Like in, in all of my businesses, we have customer surveys and there's surveys that, that people who are, we survey people who are not even customers. We ask people, why didn't you buy? There's, you always want to be learning about your customers and their demands. And that should be driving the decisions in your business for what services and offers you're going to make to those people to make sure that one, you retain them and two, you're delivering uh, on their new desires. It's so hard to just guess what customers want in any given market, in any given industry. So for example, in in real estate a long time ago, you could say the, the, the MOFR was, it was get a free home valuation report, right? And that would be like, it's, you can, you can respond immediately and get something. Right. And right, free right. is almost always the best MOFR because it takes a relationship to give, get someone to give you money. And so many people start at the top of that funnel with give me money. Make, make a financial exchange with me rather than let me add value to you first so you can discover whether you want to give me your money or not. You know, and, and it is, you can get so many more people through the front door at the top of the funnel if you make an offer for something free. So I'm a huge proponent of this. You can see tax places do this, accountants, CPAs, dentists, get people in the door for free to low cost. If you can't do free, do something like maybe you have a service that's very low revenue but high margin, something like that. What gets people like the ninety nine dollar cleaning? Store? You see, you see that a lot yeah. in, in like the dental industry. Yeah, so, so in, cleaning, in the right. hair world, we talk about you know there's some familiar concepts, right? Come in for a free consultation uh, would be an example. Come in for yep. maybe a free blowout. Come in for a free you know. So there, there, there's all sorts of things. And again, to your point, maybe it's free. Maybe it's come in for our. Twenty nine ninety nine blowout. You know, like whatever yeah. you can make the decision based on the economics of your business. But to your point, you don't want this to be a guessing game. So what's the balance there? Because on the one hand, you're going to ask questions to your customers. This is a great point you make, right? Which is that you don't want to sit there staring at the ceiling, going, "What would my customers and yeah. prospective customers want?" You do like want to get some data behind that. But give me an example of a question. Because keep in mind, to your point, yes, you could pull people who are not your customers. Those are those are a little harder to find, right? In theory, your most immediate access of data are your existing customers. What's a question you would exact, ex ask your existing customers that can give you an insight that might drive what you're going to offer to non-customers? How do you connect those dots? Well, let's take a let, let's take a, a hairstylist for example. If a hairstylist is uh, ha suffering from a demand problem, so they've noticed that they're getting more openings on their calendar, they're they have openings, so they've they've set their schedule, and they have hours available, and those hours are not as booked as they used to be. They're noticing that client frequency is going down. They're noticing that average ticket price is going down. And these are these are key key indicators you should be watching in your business. And any even if you're a tattoo artist, those are your indicators, right? Hundred percent. So it, creative service notice, business. Yeah, your service business. You're noticing these things change and you're saying, well, shoot, my existing clientele is shrinking. I'm not changing anything that very well could be an indicator of a shifting market. And you will know that. You will see things like this. You'll see the headlines. You'll be talking to other business owners. Uh, you probably, if it's, if it's uh, not just you and poor quality of service, you'll want to identify whether it's one of the two. But let's assume in this example, you're experiencing these things from a market shift. Well, then you might go, well, why are clients migrating from me? So then if you were consistently asking clients, Questions like, how would you rate the quality of the service you received? How would you rate the fairness of our prices? How would you rate the, 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 the time that you spent in the salon? Do you want, what's more important to you, faster service or quality service? You know, like really understanding 
you know, your, your customer, why did you choose us over the competition? Would be a, would be a great question, right? Why us over another salon? And, and, and you might ask, you might get more detailed. I typically like to keep these surveys like 10 questions or less just so that they, I get them filled out and not create a huge barrier. If I do more than 10 questions, I, I sometimes will do 25 to 30 question surveys, but I pay for those. I give Am right. I give free Starbucks, Starbucks and Amazon gift card, gift Amazon cards. gift yep. card, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, they're yeah. digital, basically. So like we just email you a, a, as soon as we get the results back, and and so we always offer a reward for something that's that's a little more cumbersome and time consuming, and I really want them to spend time on it. But getting that data back and asking great questions, like what would I want to know about my customer? If you have a relationship, maybe as a hairstylist, you have a close relationship with some of your customers. You can ask them, what do you wish your salon was asking you? What, what, what do you wish a business was asking you? And you can get question ideas. You can go to chat GPT and say, what are questions that I should be asking? In mm-hmm. I have a salon. Mm-hmm. I want to understand my market. I want to understand their shifting de- demands and desires as the economy changes. What are some good questions? And you can start getting ideas from those things if you're short on ideas. But essentially, just asking some questions is going to guide you down a path. And I know that you'll have some light bulb moments that would say, oh my gosh, I'm not offering that service. Like a good question would be, what services are we not offering that you wish we did? And that can, that can often open up a door to an entirely new revenue stream and a way for you to capitalize on the clientele you currently have rather than building new clientele. So when you go to think about making offer for immediate response, you're making an offer, which means you're, you are offering up value. So think about that. Offer the most valuable thing you can at the lowest entry price to, to the mm, largest like that qualified market, right? So yeah, I like that model. The highest value yes. at the most competitive price. Yes. And, and you will win. I, I promise you, <laughs> if you are the person offering the most value for the lowest price to the, to the right qualified audience, you are going to win in your market. And so if, okay, you, but I can hear people saying already cash, right? Cause we, we, we do a whole masterclass called how to charge more, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah, I can yeah. hear people already going, Whoa, time out, time out, time out, time out. Like yeah. the whole business here that I'm in is that I want to be the service provider in my area, whatever my creative profession is. I want to be the one charging the most, right? I want to be the most highly paid. I want to generate the most revenue. I want to be the premium. I want to have the highest end clientele. And now you're telling me to go out and put out a sandwich book board on the sidewalk. I'm just, this is how it is in Brooklyn. Obviously you <laughs> yeah. not necessarily do that yeah. if you're not in a high foot traffic world like I am, but you know, put out a sandwich board that says high value thing for a competitive market rate or free, which I know is super scary to a lot of hairstylists. You're, you're a big fan of the free first service in, with the right, in the right context. In the right context okay. Yeah. But, but what I would imagine you would say, and you can correct my homework here is we're in the business of lifetime customer value. That's right. We're in the business of get people in the door. That's right. We're in the business of yeah, you're going to charge them full freight when they are loyal to you and when they're coming back time after time after time for a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar lifetime customer value. Yeah. So that's the trade that we're making here is give away something for free, get something of very, very high value in return. Because by the way, it's not going to be free because cash, you're going to pay money. I'm going to ask you, this is my next question here in a second. You're going to pay money to get this message out there whether it's the assistant posting on Instagram, whether it's a Google ad, whether it's a Facebook ad, whether it's a change to your website, like you're going to put resources in the beginning. So you're going to spend money to offer something of high value for a competitive rate, whether that's free or low cost. But again, it's all in the interest of, because if you do that successfully and you have a cost per customer acquisition of, of, a, of a competitive rate and that customer value is X number of dollars, mm-hmm. you've won. That's yeah. the game. That's the math that really, that really works. Here's what keeps mark- marketers poor. This is critical to understand. If you can't understand what your delayed benefits are, then you shouldn't be making investments in your business. A delayed benefit means what is the full return that I get over a longer period of time? Truly successful and wealthy business owners understand the power of time when you make an investment. If I told you, you could buy a property, you know, you you could buy a property worth $100,000 right now, and you can pay full price. It's $100,000. And it's going to cost you $100,000. And then you're going to need to sell that property to make $100,000. Right away, you're going to make nothing. But then what if I told you, you bought the $100,000 property, and in one year, you could sell it for $500,000. That's the power of marketing using lifetime value. If I said to you on a customer analogy, if I said to you, hey, a customer spends $100 with you, it's going to cost you $200 to acquire them your retention rate is 80% and they stay with you for five years and they see you 10 times a year. 
And that's a lot of metrics. I can't do the math right in my head, but that essentially that client will be worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars over the lifetime that it, you spent to acquire them. And if they see you, let's say the client's worth a hundred bucks, right? And they see you 10 times a year, that's a thousand dollars a year for, for five years. If they stay with you for about five years, that's $5,000 and you spent 200 to make $5,000. Is that a good investment? 200 to make $5,000. Now, if I told you it took a thousand years, it'd be a bad investment. Time is so critical when it comes to marketing and you look at the lifetime value and the speed at which you can reacquire your marketing cost at X multiple. You have to be looking at advertising spend from an investor's perspective. Because if you just look at, oh, I make $100 so I can only spend $10 to acquire them. That's great. If you can do that, that's amazing. If you can make your money back on the first acquisition. But if, you're, if you want annual recurring revenue and repeat purchases, you want to make offers that are aggressive that your competition can't do because can't make or won't make because they don't understand the economics of their business. So you really have to think about this from a time perspective and a lifetime value perspective. If you are a creative professional who wants to improve your relationship with money, go to millionairehairstylistpodcast.com, create a free student account, and you can access an entire library of educational resources geared at improving your financial well-being, including a lesson on the three phases of wealth building for creative professionals. Go to millionairehairstylistpodcast.com and sign up today. Okay, so let's get practical here for a second. So so let, let's re recap. Mofer, make offer for immediate response. What we're saying basically is what are you offering your prospective customers? Let's stick with prospects. Obviously, you could also be doing this internally if you're rolling out a new service or if you're yeah. trying to upsell yep. somebody. But just for, for the sake of simplicity, this is about I want to bring more people in the door. I make an offer for immediate response. Come in for something of high value. This is a mindset we're applying here. It's high value, and it's at the most competitive rate that we can offer because, again, we're thinking of the lifetime value of that customer. So, Cash... You and I did this recently, right, in, in, in our business. And this is the part, though, I feel like where all the theory and all the models and all of the mental pre pre preparation gets very challenging because the question is now, okay, now I have to go test. I, I have to put some money somewhere. Again, assistant's going to post on Instagram a bunch. I'm going to send a bunch. I'm going to go put time in. Maybe it's a time investment DMs to every single person who's been following me. I'm going to go buy Facebook ads, Google ads, billboards, radio spots, whatever. So... You obviously cannot, in a conversation like this, build an entire hypothetical where you're going to prescribe to us the exact right steps to make to go from a concept to a, a highly successful marketing campaign based on a MOFR model. What I'm curious about, though, is the mindset that you use as a person who's done millions of dollars in marketing across your businesses. How do you start to test a concept? How do you know when a concept is worth pulling the plug on? broadly speaking, we can have another conversation another day about marketing spend and get really into the details of that. And I'd love to do that. But I'm just curious about this idea. Okay, I have my mofer, maybe one or two, right? Like, how, how do you go about actually testing that and actually deciding and trying to figure out what works, but not waste your money, right? That's the big concern. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of a, like a, a broad marketing question that you need to understand some things. You need to understand who your customer avatar is, and you need to understand where their eyeballs are. If you understand who they are and where their eyeballs are, then you can say, you can choose a platform for which you'll be making that offer. And then you need to understand your business economics. Can you afford that platform? What platform are you willing to invest in? You can also ask the question, what, what platform, where do most of my customers come from already? And where do my lowest cost per acquisition customers come from already? Because if you're in a squeezed season in your business, you should be considering those things. If This is not, this is not really the season to go spend lapdida, lackadaisical marketing and cross your fingers and do a ton of testing. We've even shrunk down. We usually do 80% in our businesses, 80% to what works and 20% to testing. And now we're actually shifting that down to 90% what works, 10% testing. Because we're, we're just moving into a different market where experimentation and we're, we're trying to bolster cash reserves for whatever may be coming. We're, we're just trying to do what smart money does. And, and that's prepare, not predict. So when you're looking at opportunities in your business to say, where could I be making these? Understand who your avatar is, understand where their eyeballs are, understand what it costs to acquire a customer on those platforms from, from past, past marketing data, if you have it. If you don't have any data, then prospecting to your current clientele for referrals is probably one of the most powerful and easy, low-hanging, low-cost ways easy. to that's make That's a text, that's an response. email. Now, yeah, that's... That's brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Text, text is amazing. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of text marketing over email, but both work and both can, can, can drive massive results in different types of businesses. But there are certain businesses with certain demographics that just 
text crushes it. We can talk about that in another episode. In this case, what if you've got if you've got no data going straight to your clientele and making your clientele an offer for immediate response, meaning, hey, get a fifty dollar Starbucks gift card for the next referral that books an appointment with me. Right. You know, right. or you can right. say, you know, I reward the act of referring. For everybody that you refer me to a free consultation, whether they book or not, you get $25 gift card to whatever, right? Gift cards are an amazing way to just drive some sort of incentive. And you can do it for limited time, right? You can do a limited time. I was literally about to say that. Put a time limit. Hey, yeah. for this month, yep. we are running yep. a special on highlights and I will do uh, a free, I'll do, a, I'll do a free consultation for anyone you want to send my way. And if you send someone my way and they sit down in my chair or not, again, you can decide how you want to do that. I'll give you a $50 Starbucks gift card, or I'll give you a free service or, you know, whatever that exchange of value is. But the limited time is helpful, I think, because it's kind of like how many times you've been asked to take a survey at the end of a purchase at a retail store where they hand you the receipt and they say, there's a survey on the back of the receipt. I've done that like twice in 10 years. So it is difficult to get people to do anything. So urgency helps, especially if they're like, I want to get my friend in the salon. Oh, we're doing a thing this month. That's always a nice way to sort of co compress the testing period that you're doing. Yep. There is a absolute obvious shift in the market. And I think the MOFR is one of the most powerful ideas to understand who your audience is and how you can acquire more demand and how you can drive more demand for your products and services within your, within your business by making offers for immediate responses, not just doing, you know, brand marketing or your typical thing understand times change, markets change, and so will the demands and desires of your client. And whoever stays ahead of those is going to work. And just to put one final point on this, Cash, you make a really good point because this is a concept I think that is universal, right? There's nothing specific to a down market with the concept of a MOFR, right? You're, you're going to, in, in your marketing strategy, you're always going to want to use this model. And I would also even argue that you're always going to want to use the model of highest value for lowest price, because at the end of the day, it's just a lead magnet strategy or it's a, it's a lead generating strategy that is wise. It's a model that's very useful. But what I would say that's really important to put a point on all of this is it's also about paying attention. This goes back to the surveying we're doing. Pay attention to the changing needs of your market to make sure that the MOFR that you're offering is 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 tailored to that changing market. So for instance, if the concern is I do a particular kind of service. I know that my clientele want to come and see me less frequently because they have less money to spend. Then maybe your MOFR is come in for our long lasting service. Come in for this thing that's going to mean you come in less. Or it might mean come in for this thing that you really want that I can offer you at a starting price of a lower. You know, so it's again, it's thinking about what are that change, what's that changing need? And is my MOFR adapting to that need? Not just the concept of the MOFR itself, but also am I meeting my customer where they're at? The, these MOFRs can 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 be made for different uh, pain points within your business, whether it's client acquisition, demand, whether it is client retention, client frequency. All of those things, if you want increased client frequency, you can start offering your clients a lower rate, but then an over a lower rate per service or lower rate per visit, whatever it is, however your charging model works. And then say when you pay them, you know, in advance, you can come in more often, right? So just be thinking outside the box. If you have a demand problem in your business, then you need to be make, making, you need a MOFR that drives demand and new customer acquisition. If you have, uh, you know, if you are full on your current clientele and you can't handle any more, then maybe you need to be making a MOFR to acquire new staff, right? Maybe you need to make an immediate, make an offer for immediate response to acquire a, a new, new employees. So the concept can be put into so many different things within your business. It's just something that you are gonna give high value on that someone is gonna come and make an, can make an immediate response. You can acquire an email, you can acquire a customer. I, I think it's interesting, Cash, when you apply the MOFR concept to hiring, it's book your, book an interview today. You know, yeah. it's not just apply for a job. It's click here to find time on my calendar to have a conversation about working about, you know, uh, building a six figure career as a stylist in my salon today. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what's that action that's going to get someone to, to do something immediately. And again, it's a little different when you're talking about employees, but that mindset is super powerful. If you're a hairstylist, if you're a creative professional and you are interested in your financial well-being, remember to like and subscribe so that more episodes just like this one show up in your YouTube feed.